This week, we're traveling to the Jerez Racing Circuit to meet a local Gibraltarian who seeks his thrills on the tarmac. We will learn about the physical and personal demands of motor car racing. We will see how technology is helping to make the sport safer and more accessible to everyone. Finally, we will see what drives individuals to have an apparent need for speed. In a sport that can have fatal consequences, we will talk to Piers Watson, who despite a very near miss, has still returned to pursue his passion. This is the push. Is that all right? Is that all on? Right, yeah. That's all okay. Ten minutes, it's, it's, it's about maybe two millimetres or... I'll have to leave it. That's, we can't run any more tear out than that. So I'll have to leave it. I'll have to just deal with it. No, like I said, I didn't get a, a sort of a, a fast lap in. I was sort of just cruising, feeling it. Okay, well, we, we hope the fuel is the... We hope, we really hope that's the issue, eh? I'm a bit worried about that. Because it, because it really like it really cut out for a long time as well. Like coming out the right hand around the back, it's like fourth gear, like for a good hundred meters. It took a while to clear, yeah. Twenty-five meters, yeah. I, I would put. We hope it's the fuel level issue. Yeah. So you know, the race cars are like the road car. We we try and run the minimum fuel that we can because fuel is weight. The more weight we have, the slower we go. So we try and run it as, as little fuel as possible. Yeah. So we had an issue earlier with, with the car cutting out on some of the corners because we've run the fuel too low, which okay. is creating uh, air in the system because the fuel is moving around the corners. Okay. So, so we, have a, we have a flat tank. So if the fuel goes that way, there's the, the, the fuel pump sucking air. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, the, the devil's in the detail and, and all these fine details with tire pressures and oil pressures and it all, it, it all it takes what lap time they're going to do. So it's not just about grabbing the car and off we go. It's you know, what fuel level should we put in for qualifying? What tire pressures? What tires? We've got hard compounds. We've got medium compounds. So we've got. Yeah, these are good as well. Eh? Yeah, yeah. The other side as well. There's nothing wrong with that. On the rear, that'll be fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll get another one. Yeah. That one's. I leave that one stuck. Okay, get another one. There's another one. There. So then I started racing go-karts in the, the Spanish Championship uh, when I was 15. Wow. So okay. I did the 100cc, uh, I did that for three years. I finished third, second and third, I think, the championships each year. So I did that for three years and then I went into saloon cars. I did a year of saloon cars when I was 17, I think, or 18. Wow. And then obviously, like all of us here, went to university, studies, got a proper job. Yeah. Um, came back to Jib, had a yeah, proper job obviously with, with the Bacedoni group for the last uh, 13 years. And then four years ago we started to go racing. Again. If it cuts out, you'll come in and we'll put fuel in, yeah? Or you'll just live with it? Well, it shouldn't cut out, no? Okay, no, well it might. I mean, it all starts with my dad, really. I mean, my dad's raced cars since he was 17 years old. He's raced professionally in the UK, abroad, America, you know, he's done a lot of, you know, Le Mans. So really, I guess my interest in cars stems from him. Also, I grew up with him racing cars as, as well. So, you know, he did the hill climbing jib, obviously in the early 80s. Yeah. Then when the border opened, he raced in the Andalusian Championship, like I'm doing today. So, you know, if, if, you, if you rewind 30, 32 years, I was here. My wow. dad was racing and I was a kid running around the paddock. Yeah. Uh, it takes years, we're still learning. Well, I mean, I've been at it since I was 17 and a half, 18. Wow. I'm now 72, so, and I'm still learning every day. So, um, so you're Piers' sort of coach and mentor? Well, so he doesn't need coaching anymore. You know, he's, he's good enough to, you know, he's been at this a long time, you know. Um, yeah, karting, 14, 13, 14, yes. You know, obviously you talk about lines and apexes and clipping points and, you know, the, the braking area so as you put weight over the front wheels for a couple of seconds. And, but now, I, I knew you yourself had a sort of motor racing career when you were younger. T tell us yeah, a little I mean, bit about that because... Well, I started in Formula Ford, then Formula 3, uh, then touring cars in UK, sports cars. Um, and then, after many years later, coming to Jib when the Frontier was closed in 1977, all I did was the hill climb, but when the Frontier opened, we took the single-seater to Spain and we did hill climbing. 
and then I did a Renault 5 Turbo, various other cars, and then we ran classic Mini Cooper S's, three of them, for about eight or nine years. Wow. Um, lucky enough to become three times Spanish national champion. Um, and then I raced a Porsche and then a Ferrari in the Spanish GT. Uh, the Porsche for four seasons and the Ferrari for four seasons. Until I retired. <laughs> That's in 2008, yeah, my last race was in 2008. Wow. And I'm sure not many Gibraltarians are aware, you know, that we've got sort of racing heritage in Gib. I love driving, I love working on the cars. I love watching Formula One on TV, motorbikes on TV. Yeah, yeah I'm a pet boy. I, we love cars, it's my thing, you know? Yeah. So. And, and you've been doing quite well in the last four years, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we've done, we've done really well. I mean, we came runner-up in the championship last year. Um, we've had a lot of wins over the last two years, and, and, and this year, unfortunately, we, we've had a lot of, well, I wouldn't say, you know, I don't really, I hate to say bad luck, but yeah, we've had a lot of bad luck. You know, we, second, first round of the year, we had a mechanical failure, which put us out of the races. Yeah. Our career, we had a big crash. You've got tracks like Jerez, which are FIA approved, and then tracks like Almeria, which are Andalusian Federation approved. Yeah. Almeria would okay. never pass international safety regs. So, yeah, it's a more dangerous track, you could say. Yeah, so it was uh, the first race in Almeria. Um, I was battling with another car. It was on a, quite a long straight just before a tight left that I had to brake for. And we were running side by side and unfortunately he, he nudged my left rear, which caused my car to go up in the air just on the braking point. So I was right. just about to hit the brakes to change down from fifth gear to third and he hit me. So I missed my braking point, didn't have time to really slow the car down before it left the tarmac. And unfortunately, Armoria is not like Jerez that has proper gravel traps. They just had dirt, right. just hard dirt. Right. And it rained the day before, so the dirt was really hard, like was smooth. So unfortunately, the car just skidded across the dirt sideways into a tyre barrier. Okay. And the tyre barrier was made of truck tyres, which you would never get approved at, uh, at any other track. So the first thing on my mind, honestly, is, is the car on fire. Because you're strapped in, it okay. takes time to get out. So the first thing I, I was like, shit, am I on fire? No, I'm not on fire. The next thing is get out of the car. So I, I ran out. I couldn't get out of that door, my driver door, because it was all smashed. So this car's right hand drive, so I had to get out the, the left door. I clambered out. I was, you know, um, but ultimately, yeah, we went off, flew off the track. I went sideways into the tires at about 140 impact speed. 140 km so it was a an big, hour. It was a big crash. I mean, the, 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 the body shell was totally twisted. The safety cage inside kept me safe. Okay. Obviously the race seat with the size of the seat stopped my head moving. Did you sustain any injuries? No broken bones, but I had obviously a whiplash, I uh, had bruised ribs. Yeah. I had a lot of bruises up and down my left, my right side where I went, because literally it hit right side into the, into the tires. Into the tires. So yeah, a lot of bruises. Yeah, the next day, Monday, Tuesday, I was sort of in bed most day, I just couldn't really move. But in my mind, what I wanted to do is get back in a car straight away. I, I love cars. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to feel in my head that a car's going to hurt me. Or you know, it's, For me, it's like I feel safe. I feel happy. So this, car's, this actual car's new this year, because unfortunately we, we wrecked the last one. So this car is everything's been upgraded from everything bolt we had in the last car. We've been upgraded. So things like the brakes have been like installed, maybe better than the last car were. Maybe the any part of the car that we'll go around this side. Any part of the car that was second hand or oldish has been replaced for new this year. Uh, the car's been lightened. She so spent a lot of time, a lot of think, a thought pattern 
on finding parts we don't need on the car to actually leave off the car. So rather than adding things, it's taking things away. It makes the car a bit lighter. Power to weight ratio, so lighter is faster. That's what we want. Um, uh, my speciality is not tyres, but we have put a lot of time and effort into thinking about tyre setup for this year. So that combination of weight, more power, uh, better, better driver uh, comfort, you know, the, 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 everything inside the car to suit the driver better. So as you can see, these things are not the easiest to get into. But, you know, it's all there for safety, so, you know, as you can see, a lot of bars. <laughs> and, you know, the, the car, the previous car had a similar setup, and that's what saved me in Almeria, because I hit it that way. The bars protected what it was, the seat protected my head from going out. So, yeah, that's, it's, it's hard to get in, but it's there for a reason. I'd rather it all be there. Yeah, I mean, it would be an absolute nightmare every time you go to Morrison's getting in and out of this car, <laughs> but I, yeah. you can see the benefits yeah. from it. Ready to go for qualifying. Okay. So ultimately, we're just going to double check the tire pressures are good. We'll check the the torque settings in five minutes. We'll check those, and then it, obviously it's down to the driver. Then the driver's got to get in the car, get himself ready, get his helmet, his gloves, his, his uh, clover on, and then basically we we go and qualify. Which is then at that point, we, our job is done, and it's down to the driver all the way. So hopefully, it will be good. We have a few issues we're worried about, but we're hopefully we've got over them with what we've done. Oh, sorry, I switched it off. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. I'm always calm when the car's in here. Okay. When the car's out, out there, I'm nervous. <laughs> it's like you're you're responsible for the car. So you, when it's uh, when it's out there, it's like it's in the danger zone. But yeah, Hereth, Hereth has always been good to us. So. Here we go. We had the privilege to spend time with Piers during a racing weekend in Jerez. It was clear to see that the driver's performance depended not only on their skill, but the dedication of his support team. You know, we've got a very good team with Steve, who's really the daddy of the car. You know, what he doesn't know, what he doesn't know about this car, every screw, every washer, I helped him do, do the rebuild, but he did the obviously the major work. Uh, Gabriel is a, is a professional uh, race engineer, data engineer, uh, who's testing here next week in, in Formula 4. Um, he flies up around Europe for race teams that grab him because he's very, very good at his job. Um, and we're very lucky to have him because um, he was doing freelance Lascari, that's how I met him. Um, and um, he's fantastic. He deals with tire temperatures, pressures, and the track, all the geometries. So he feeds it back. He can read it through the tires. Wow. So when we're racing, we're very lucky to have him. Yeah, I know. 28. For the race, it's good. What did we start with then? 24. 21. 21. It was 24 in the first session of the morning. 21's good. I think it is because you're almost half uh, Half a second clear on the other cars of, of, your, of your class, and everyone's uh, That's good to know all the time. Yeah, we are here P9 to 2.6. Yeah, Acevedo is uh, the 308 here behind. My, my, my 
Stay away from behind the side. Oh, really? Oh, no. You stay away from you just that, though. You will stay away from <laughs> Yeah. And, so the uh, clears are well behind me then. Where's Casanova? Two or fours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My time's good then. Yeah, yeah, no, no, your time is good. And it's not your idea. No, no, I, I didn't like it's... I said, it feel that it was a really good lap. I think we'll put the fronts on the back and put new ones on the front. Yeah. It's just, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't... I'm going to be so slow the first three laps with the hards on the back. It worked after three or four laps, but it took three laps. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, we'll swap them around. So we'll put we'll put new yeah, mediums on the front. Yeah, we'll put yeah. new mediums on the front and put mediums. We'll put those tires on the back. The competitors are so close to me in time that with the hards on the back, it takes three or four laps before it gets good. And at that time, everyone passes you. So if I want to be quick out of the box, I need to put the softer on the back. Then I've got the grip. It matters. It, it matters. When everyone's so close, you're know, the, guy, the other guys in my class are like two tenths of a second behind me only, so you know, we're all doing the same time pretty much. So if I'm a second slow in the first three laps, they can pass me and then... And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we've got a good balance, but like I say, it took four laps for the balance to feel good, because the rears took time to heat up. And we can't have that in the race. The race is only ten laps. Exactly. I can't have four laps slow yeah. and six laps fast. I've got to have ten laps fast. Yeah, there's no, yeah exactly. There's no, <laughs> there's no warm up in a race. No, no, exactly. Yeah, Although well, honestly, like I said, it, it, it didn't feel to me like the best lap, but the main thing is I'm faster than the people directly competing against, so that's all I need to do, really. So, yeah, do, happy with that. So let's see how it goes in the race. Yeah. They just need the driver to do his job. <laughs> They've done all they can. Now it's up to me to you know, drive well and, and hopefully not come into contact. But as we see in all forms of racing, you know, F1 to whatever, you never know what's going to happen in, in the start. I could gain a place, I could lose a place, there could be someone spin in front of me. They, could be a lot of things happen, so let's see. Planted on mediums? Yeah, it feels a lot better. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you tell straight away. Yeah. The rear end, the confidence, the grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. The front feels nice with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels good. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some good warming up this lap, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's the last word is. I don't know what to say really, it is what it is. That's the right to racing. Right to racing is either very good to you or very bad to you, so it will be what it be. <laughs> Two forms of start in racing, you've either got a standing start, like you see in F1 and motorbikes and a lot of other racing, where you, you line up in your grid spot, green light, and you go. This is rolling start, so we, we have a grid formation. We, are, we do our warming up lap, come around, we cruise down the start finish straight, all in formation at about 100 kilometers an hour, then the light goes green and we all gun it.
Well done. Well done. And did you? Well built. I can't even like it, like look at the track. And yeah. Like, when he goes past, I, I hear the engine. That's it. <laughs> the daddy of the car. I'm the I'm the, the man that built the car. Yeah, sixth overall, first in class. Great, great result. Javier por la segunda y a pies como 20.